Hi, my name is Justin Schaff, and I'm the founder here at Patch My PC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up our publisher to automatically create and update Win32 applications within Microsoft Intune. The first thing that you want to do is if you're not already a customer or have not already got a full trial, if you go to our website and click Request Trial in the banner, you can submit a small form that will give you full access for 30 days to publish the entire application catalog to Microsoft Intune. Once you've requested the trial and have the URL, you can then go to our download and docs and download the latest MSI for our publisher. Now, the MSI can be installed on either Windows Server or Windows 10 client. Now, if you install it on Windows Server, one of the prerequisites that you need before you run the MSI is you would have to install the WSUS uh, feature for the UI only component of WSUS. So that's simply required because we still make use of some of the schema from WSUS for creating applications in Intune. Now, this is the PowerShell commandlet that you can install the UI only part. So that means you do not have to worry about having any of the services running or the databases created. It's simply going to install some XML files that we used for the schema. Now, in the event that you use Windows 10 client for the uh, machine that you want to install our publisher on, you would have to go into the settings and the optional features and simply enable the RSAT Windows Server Update Services. That should be the only prerequisite that you need before running our MSI. So once that's done and downloaded, go ahead and run the MSI and it's a pretty basic installation. Now there is one checkbox that is relevant for Intune only mode. So in this case, since we're running an Intune standalone and we're not making use of WSUS updates or Configuration Manager applications, we're going to go ahead and check that box that says Enable Intune Standalone Mode. What that's going to do is disable some of the prerequisite checks that we would typically perform if this was a Configuration Manager setup. Now, in the event that you want to use Configuration Manager software updates and applications in addition to Intune, if you're using co-management, you would not want to enable that checkbox. You would leave it unchecked. Now, once we launch the installation, the first thing that we're going to notice is you have an option to activate your license. So within the URL, you can simply paste in the trial URL, or if you're a customer, enter the URL that you received within your subscription email. So once that's activated, uh, you can click OK. Now that's going to give you access to all the products within our service. Now if you want to, you do have the ability to enable a public trial mode, which does not require any URL or trial subscription. By enabling that mode, it's going to limit you to a small subset of products for publishing for evaluation purposes only. So let's go ahead and activate that once more for the full mode. Now, the next step for Intune Publishing is you just jump over to our Intune Apps tab. From here, we would simply click Automatically Create Apps and then choose the Options menu. Now, there are some prerequisites that we need to configure before we can start publishing applications. So the first thing is within your Intune tenant, you want to go into your tenant administration and then copy the domain name that you're using for your Microsoft Intune tenant. So in the tenant name, you should be able to copy that domain and then within the UI, you want to go ahead and paste that where it says enter tenant domain name. Once that's completed, we want to go into Azure AD app registrations. So if we go into Azure AD, uh, we'll include a link in the description that includes the direct link to app registrations, or you could simply search for it from Azure AD. From here, uh, you want to click on new registration and then give it a name. So we'll call this Patch My PC Setup Intune Demo. You can leave it uh, as a single tenant. If you do have multiple tenant domains and you want to grant access to multi-tenants, you could potentially choose some of the other options here. For this, we're going to leave the default options for the domains as well as the redirect. Now, once that app ID is created, we're going to want to copy the application client ID directly from here. And then we're going to paste that into the application ID within our portal. The next thing that we want to do here is go under the uh, API permissions and click on add permissions. So this is going to be where we add Microsoft Graph permissions that allow us to create applications and update applications within your Microsoft Intune tenant. So we want to click add application permissions and then under the device management apps, 
we want to grant the ability to read and create applications. Now, if you want to use our automatic assignment feature, which we'll show later in the video, we would need access to read groups in that scenario. And then click Add Permissions. Once you click Add, you then need to grant the consent for those permissions you added. Depending on your permissions, this might have to be done by a global administrator within your tenant. The next thing that we want to do is create a secret key. So under Certificates and Secrets, we want to click New Client Secret and create the new key. Now, in my case, I'm going to make it never expire. But if you did have it expire, you would have to make sure that you set a notification. And within our publishing service, whenever you create a new key, you would have to come in and overwrite the previous key that you had configured. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add. Now, once I add this, we can go ahead and copy the value here within the tool. Now, you want to go ahead and save this to a place where you can keep it secure. Because once you create this key, you can't come back in here and copy it. So now that we have that copied, we're going to go ahead and paste that within our tool here. Now once that's done, we can click Test Connection to see if our tool has access within your tenant. Now if you just created the client secret key, sometimes it can take a few seconds before that takes place. So we can see that the first time we tested it, it did not have access. But that second time, it finally kicked in and we had access using your app ID and that secret key. The next configuration is related to whether or not you want to digitally sign the PowerShell detection method scripts used by our Win32 applications. Depending on your PowerShell execution policy, you might want to enable code signing the PowerShell detection method scripts that are created from our service. Now, in the event that you do want to enable that, what you would want to do is enable the certificate in the personal certificate store for the computer. So you can open up certlm.msc, and then from here, you would want to make sure you import whichever code signing certificate that you want to use to sign the detection method scripts. In our case, we've got one that we created from our Active Directory certificate server. You could also use a public certificate if needed from something like DigiCert, for example. Now, in this scenario, we are not going to enable this option, but if you click on Browse to enable it, it will look at the computer's local certificate store to actually enable that. We'll choose Cancel on that. The next three options are related to how you want to handle new application updates that come out when we synchronize our service. So the first one is related to whether or not you want to copy any assignments for previously created applications. So for example, let's say that an application for Chrome 79 was created, and then a few days later, version 80 came out. In the event that you want us to automatically copy any assignments, even if they were performed directly in the Intune uh, console, we can copy any of those custom assignments and then auto-deploy the new version 80 that we create to the same Azure AD groups. The next one about deleting assignments, that would allow us to automatically delete any assignments from the previous 79 version to make only deployments or assignments work for the latest versions um, if you wanted to. So that's kind of how we created our own type of supersedence to make sure that you're deploying the latest ones since supersedence is not currently available within Microsoft Intune. The last option here is whether you want to delete the previous versions. Now, this one is not enabled by default, but if you wanted version 79 of Chrome to auto-delete from Microsoft Intune, you could check that box here. We'll leave these default options and then choose OK. Now, before doing that, though, there is a bulk Intune editor for Win32 applications that we can create. Now, in our case, it's not going to detect any applications simply because none have been created yet. But in the event that you had a lot of Intune applications created and you wanted to do things like bulk delete assignments or delete applications, that's where the uh, utility can come and be quite helpful for those bulk scenarios. So we're going to go ahead and choose OK. And now we can go in and enable whichever products that we want to enable for Intune Publishing. Now before we actually enable some of these products, there are some actions that we can apply for our application installs globally at the all products level. So for example, let's say that you wanted to disable self-updates for Intune. You could automatically apply that to all products from the all products level. We can also do things like enable logging. So if you want to enable logging for the vendor's installation, whether that's an EXE or an MSI, we can automatically create a log file. By default, it's in a folder in program data. 
that saves any installation logs. So that would be helpful for troubleshooting if any installation logs fell and it's the vendor's installer that's having a bad exit code, for example. Another helpful right-click option is deleting shortcuts. So if you wanna auto-delete shortcuts for apps from the public desktop, you can do that. And then one of the more helpful ones, we can automatically create assignments to different Azure AD groups. So in our case, we don't have any custom groups. We only have the default all users group. But if you had custom groups, you would see them all listed within this pane here, and you could even filter as well. So here we can automatically deploy uh, as available to all users in this example. You can also create required deployments and uninstall deployments as well. Now, if you click the group name, you also get additional options based on Intune, like whether or not you wanna suppress restarts, when you wanna make the app available or required, if it was required, all of these are customizable. You can also configure notifications level uh, for applications for how that shows in company portal, as well as whether you want to install for all users or per user, for example. So in this case, we're gonna automatically deploy all products to the all users as available so that uh, users could see it in company portal. Now for this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and enable an application for Google Chrome. Now, once we get into the product level of the application, if we right click, there are some additional options that are available per product. So for example, if you wanted to have a custom pre or post script get applied or a custom command line, or even an MST transform if it's an MSI based product, you can apply those additional customizations at the product level. The only other one we'll do for this demonstration is let's enable 7-zip and the 64-bit MSI, for example. We'll go ahead and choose apply. And then under the sync schedule, this is gonna be how often you want our publishing service to check our catalog to see whether or not there are any new updates for any applications that we publish. So by default, we check every night at 7 p.m. So we generally do about four to five catalog updates uh, per week, and this would make sure that your apps in Intune stay up to date. You can configure this based on whichever meets your needs for your sync schedule. Before we want to run our first synchronization, you can also do things like enable a Microsoft Teams webhook where you could automatically get notified about any new applications that have been created or updated within Microsoft Intune. You can also enable email alerting as well. So now that we have our alerts enabled, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Run Publishing Service Sync to get the applications creating within Intune. So while that sync is running, we can see that we do not currently have any applications within Microsoft Intune. So we can see that we're starting to have some applications uh, getting created on the back end. So we can see that it's not currently uploaded yet, so our service is probably still in the process of uploading that latest Google Chrome update. So once that upload is complete, we should receive a Teams alert letting us know that Google Chrome was published and it's now available uh, within Intune for assignments. Now we'll give that a few minutes and we'll come back once we see the notification. Okay, so we just got our Teams alert letting us know that there's been a new application created. So we can now see that there is a new app created for Google Chrome. So this lets us know it's now completed. Within our Teams alerts, you can also directly click on release notes as well as any CVEs associated with that new Win32 app that we just created. So if we come back in and click on Chrome now, we can see that uh, it's now uh, no longer showing that message that it's not fully uploaded. Within the properties, you can see that we also fill out quite a few uh, options like icons, descriptions, URLs, and things like that. We can also see we just got another alert. It looks like 7 that was just created. Same type of concept here. Now, if we look back on Chrome, we can also see that that assignment that we created uh, to the all users as available was automatically created for us based on that right-click option. If we come in here and refresh our apps, we should also see that we now have 7-Zip available, and that one is also assigned to our users as well. So at this point, uh, we've done our initial setup. Now, what we're going to do on the back end is we're going to simulate what it will look like when a new catalog update is available and these products start to update in place. So we'll make that change and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've just simulated an update on the back end. So what's gonna happen here is when we run a synchronization, it's gonna simulate Google Chrome version 80 like it just got released. So what we should notice in the log file is that it's gonna start to download Chrome 80 
And once it starts to create this application in Intune, we're gonna see that it should automatically delete the assignments from the previous version 79 and then uh, create the assignments for version 80. So this will likely take a few minutes. So we can see that we've now detected that we need to update version 79 and we can see this in the log file with version 80. So now it's currently in the process of uploading the app to Intune. So if we refresh now, we might see both applications at the current time. Here we go. So we can see that it's still in the process of uploading. So at this point, Google Chrome 79 is still assigned and version 80 is not quite uh, deployed yet. So we should see once that upload completes and we get our Teams notification that at that point it should remove the assignment from the previous outdated version of the application and then have the new one for version 80 automatically assigned either to the uh, groups that we created whether that was manually assigned through Intune or using the right click option if we had that enabled. And the reason it's gonna automatically remove the old assignment is based on the options menu where we're telling it to delete any assignments we detect for old versions. So we can see that we just got that Teams alert and we can see that in this case, an Intune application was updated. So we can see that that's different than the initial one where it said created because that was the first time it ran. So at this point, if we refresh now, we should see that version 80 is now assigned and version 79 is no longer assigned. So that's how you can make sure that when you assign these deployments to your Intune groups, that you're always deploying the latest ones and keeping your devices up to date. That's all for this video. That includes the entire setup. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.